Yeah. Go for the person who doesn't want to. Hillary Clinton responded to a lawsuit about her use of a private email server yesterday, submitting formal answers under penalty of perjury, saying 21 times in response to requests for information she did not recall. Which, you know, it's unfortunate. They asked her her middle name, and it was like, did not recall. I don't know. Ask, all the time. Asked her what month it was. Do not recall. That's a hard one, too. She really did say, did not recall on, on the most basic of questions. 21 times. So these are similar to her previous statements to the FBI. At the same time, Donald Trump continued to hammer Secretary Clinton in her handling of classified materials and suggested he'd also have the FBI looked into. She should be locked up. She should. And if I win, I am going to ask my attorney general to appoint a special prosecutor to look into her crimes. And we're also going to look in to the investigation. In other words, we're going to investigate the investigation because what happened is a disgrace. She doesn't have the strength. She doesn't have the aptitude. She doesn't have what it takes. And you know, when she's over in China, if she goes down in Tiananmen Square, they'll just leave her there. They're tough people. They're just going to leave her there. They're not going to help her up. They'll say, let her come up when she's ready. These are tough people. Could we get Donald on the phone to explain what the hell he was talking about? What is he talking I mean, about? If she falls, you if mean she literally goes falls down. down. He meant if she literally falls down in Tiananmen Square no one's in gonna China, where there are tough people, they're just going to leave her there. I think he's referring I mean, back is... to her health problems, maybe, if she were maybe. on a diplomatic uh, trip to China, yeah. she might fall doing. on the, the yeah. Chinese. Mm. The Chinese if would just leave her there, up. because, after all, <laughs> why? I mean, <laughs> what is he talking about? This exactly. is really... The Secret Service... Uh, because they because leave. the they're Chinese are yeah, no, yeah, strong button. people, and they would leave her on the floor where she, they deserve to be, rather than these wussy Americans who right. might pick her up and give her a helping hand and vote for her. And then right, yes. let's go back a couple beats in the soundbite. Yeah. He's going to have an, launch an investigation into the FBI yeah. because he believes that they yeah. acted improperly. So right. who's going to do that investigation? The KGB? Or <laughs> who's going to I contract it out to the FSB? All of the WikiLeaks stuff and her emails and what's coming out, were we not talking about about multiple women saying they were sexually abused by Donald Trump would be the big story, right? This is it what would be well. totally dumb. But then he takes it and he blows it up into something so extraordinary about her falling down yeah, in Tiananmen Square or investigating the investigator or putting her in jail that he debunks his own possibilities. Of Speaking this of story. putting her in jail, Charles Krauthammer writes in the Washington Post this morning, it's not the locker room talk, it's the lock her up talk. He writes that Trump crashed because of a sex talk tape is odd. It should have been a surprise to no one. His views on women have been on open display for years, and he'd offered a dazzling array of other reasons for disqualification, to which Liz Trump added in the second debate, and it had nothing to do with sex. It was his threat, if elected, to put Hillary Clinton in jail. Such incendiary talk is an affront to elementary democratic decency. This election is not just about placing the nuclear codes in Trump's hands. It's also about handing him the instruments of civilian coercion, such as the IRS, the FBI, the FCC, the SEC. Think of what he could do to enforce the, quote, fairness he demands. Imagine giving over the vast power of the modern state to a man who says in advance that he will punish his critics and jail his opponent. Caddy? I don't know where to start. Well, I, 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 mean, I, I wrote about this after the debate, actually. That was... That right, was I was actually asking Caddy, because I know she reads every one of your columns. Oh, okay. She talked it's, about your column. But no, go ahead, Gina. No, no. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it, it just struck me as like the most <clears throat> un-American thing that was said in that debate, frankly, that we, we were going to... Um, we don't do that in this country. We don't you know, have political leaders come in, new, newly elected leaders who immediately go about trying to jail the previous leaders. I've lived in countries and covered countries where that sort of thing happens, and we do not want to go there. And, you That's know, not Kat, us. And we, we, we have transitions of power where, right. where leaders do not like one another. Dwight Eisenhower had little use for JFK, little use. Uh, Barack Obama had little use for George Bush Barack back Ob in 2008. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting, they grow. Of course, Jimmy Carter had no use for Ronald Reagan. But uh, over time, every one of them hand, hands over the power gracefully. And over time, 
they begin to understand and respect one another. There's a lot that's depressing about the state of American politics at the moment, and you can make a, a convincing case that the country is virtually ungovernable because of our divided politics and the partisanship that we find in Congress and in the media and around the country. But one of the extraordinary things that happens here every four years that is that shining beacon to people around the world, particularly mm. people who live in countries and countries I grew up in where they don't have that right, is that there is a peaceful transfer of power. And it happens on that very cold day in January and one president comes down and another president leaves. No. And it is extraordinary. However bitter the campaign has been, you can rely on the fact that there were maybe, you know, some of the people in the Bush administration took, you know, messed around in the White House, or some of the people in the Clinton administration took the W's off the typing keys right. in the White House. That's as far as it goes. Right. One person comes in, the other person leaves, and it happens with grace and dignity and true commitment to democratic spirit. So he's risking undermining yeah. that process. And so you say some places that you grew up in didn't it didn't happen. Well, like over what, the Middle East. Cambridge? Like a what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is it always an yeah. ugly power struggle? You get one we're, one, we're, one dean we're out. We're still litigating the yes, right. transfer of power from yeah. Thatcher. Those onward. dons <laughs> carry knives, you know, <laughs> and they just uh, it gets ugly over there. <laughs> <laughs> this presidential race is not happening in a vacuum. The new issue of the Economist looks at how the world is responding and based on the title of the issue doesn't look good <laughs> we'll dig into quote the debasing of american politics <laughs> my gosh we'll be right back. <laughs>